I recently got myself those 22 farad super capacitors, which are indeed quite super, because after charging them up to their maximum rated voltage of 2.5 volts, they are capable of delivering up to 69 joules of energy, which is around 140 times more than your average electrolytic capacitor at the same size. Of course, my Analoop AA battery still can hold up to 150 times more energy than my SuperCap, but on the other hand, due to its lower internal resistance, the SuperCap can supply more current than your common AA. A common field of application for those are emergency flashlights, like the so-called shaking torch. After a couple of the name and plane shakes, the 0.33 farad super cap is charged up to 4.8 volts, which is around 3.8 joules of stored energy. That can be used to illuminate a white LED for roughly 5 minutes. But even after the LED got dark, the super cap is still charged to 2.7 volts, which basically means that 32% of the initial energy is unusable for us due to the high forward voltage of the LED. Thankfully though, there exists a rather popular and simple circuit, the Jewel Thief, that can solve this problem. And in this video, I will show you how easy it can be to build one of those and how hard it actually is to master its circuit design. Let's get started. First off, let's gather the components that we need. One generic NPN BJT, in my case the BC637 with a 1 kilo ohm base resistor, a hand wind transformer which I created by winding two lengths of 0.65mm enamel copper wire around a ferrite toroid core with an inner diameter of 8.4mm and an outer diameter of 14.7mm, and soldering the opposing inputs and output wire together. And finally the LED I want to power, in this case a 0.5W power LED with a forward voltage of 3.2V. According to the rather simple schematic, I then created 5 solder joints in order to connect the components to one another. And if you want to give the circuit a try as well, you can find a parts list and the schematic in the video description. After powering the circuit with my lab bench power supply, the circuit actually seems to work pretty well for the fact that it was created in less than 15 minutes. But it is still not suitable for my application, because supply voltages above 2.2 volts only heat up the transistor and not illuminate the LED. So let's analyze the working behavior of the circuits to find a possible solution. In the beginning, a small amount of base current only lets a small amount of collector current flow. This collector current then induces a voltage into the secondary coil of the transformer, which is in series to the voltage source due to its reverse winding direction and thus increases the base current, which therefore increases the collector current. This process repeats until the transistor reaches its saturation state, in which the collector current rises in a linear fashion, the primary coil builds up its magnetic field and the induced voltage into the secondary is at its maximum. But once the magnetic flux density of the toroid core is reached, the induced voltage decreases, the base current decreases as well and the transistor is no longer in its saturation state. Practically, no collector current can flow anymore, but the energy of the primary coil's magnetic field needs to dissipate. The result is an overvoltage of around 94 volts at the collector if no load is connected, or around the forward voltage of my LED if I connect it between the collector and emitter. This cycle then repeats all over again. So in a nutshell, it is an oscillator which acts as a crude boost converter. And if we take a look at the voltages near the 2.3V mark, we can see that the frequency increases rapidly until the oscillation disappears completely. To solve that, we could either create another transformer with more windings and a bigger toroid core in order to increase the inductance and thus slow down the charging and discharging process and decrease the overall frequency of the oscillator, or we just keep it simple by increasing the value of the base resistor and thus decreasing the overall base current. In both cases, the circuit finally does work pretty well with my fully charged up supercapacitor and illuminates my LED up to 20 minutes continuously. 
but don't think this circuit is perfect, not even close. Even though the efficiency can be as good as 94% for voltages around 1.5 volts, it can also be as poorly as 24% for voltages near its upper and lower input limits. In conclusion I can say that the circuit is pretty easy to create for beginners, but it can get quite difficult to properly understand the function principle and dimension the components. I hope you liked this video, if so don't forget to like, share and subscribe, that would be awesome. Consider supporting me through Patreon, that is what keeps the show going. Stay creative and I will see you next time.